Good afternoon guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are in Gramps again. We are headed down to Samson Racing, the machine shop, and we're gonna drop off the block. So we're headed there now. I actually have the block back there in the little trailer, and I'm man enough to say that I can't lift a block into the bed of the truck by myself. So, tilted the bed back on the trailer, slid it in there all by myself, and I got the crank and the rods here as well. Uh, we'll have them take a look at those as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let's jump right into it. Here we are, we just made it to uh, Samson Racing Engines. Got the block and the rods dropped off here. He's gonna check out the rods. He's gonna pressure test the block, make sure it's all good to go. And then once it passes the pressure testing, we'll, uh, we'll get it all machined up and ready to assemble again. So here Jake's working on a crank here. He's got it on the balancer. So that's kind of what that looks like. And as you can see, he's got plenty of projects to work on here. Jake for letting me take a look around his shop, showing me all his machines. Uh, super cool dude. I'll put his information on the screen and in the description down below. Samson Racing Engines. I can't believe it's finally real. Finally got a chance to go drop it off. This is the start of the big, big horsepower for Gramps. So I'm, I'm really excited. Hope you guys are too. A lot of decisions to be made on, on all sorts of things like what, what compression ratio to run, what fuel we're gonna run. Uh, so if you guys have any comments or recommendations, should we try to stick with pump gas or go with E85? I'm definitely not going with race fuel. Uh, it's way too expensive and inconvenient. Uh, so just let me know what you guys think. Uh, so thanks again, Jake. I'll see you guys back at the house. <laughs> not bad for almost 90 degrees out definitely not great boost weather <laughs> so we are back at the house now gramps is in the garage really a bummer that this crank that came in the motor ended up being cast so we cannot use it for the built motor because it's just not going to be able to handle the power that we're going to be putting through it uh, so <clears throat> with that being said the guy that i got the block from jesse who has the really awesome lightning hopefully his lightning is uh out this time around. He reached out and said he has a forged lightning crank that I can pick up from him. So we're about to head back out, go pick up that crank from Jesse. Uh, we're actually gonna be taking the Viper today. And uh, just wanted to point out, we had some, I finally got a chance to put a line in here for the PCV breather system, the one that goes up to the air box. This is normally just a plastic, uh, corrugated plastic tube that goes down into the PCV system and it was just so brittle it was the original hose and it just cracked into like three pieces when we were messing with it so now I got this 5 8 union into a 5 8 uh, heater hose and it fits just perfectly now so that the PCV system is now routed back into the air box so if any of you were curious about the status on that got that fixed up now let's get a cold start on my 2000 Dodge Viper GTS with headers, no cats, and no mufflers.
So we just loaded up the crank in the parts car here. So yeah, that definitely looks a lot better. That's what a forged crank should look like. So we'll get that dropped off at Minneapolis Crankshaft Supply, have them test it out, make sure everything's good to go. This is actually the crank that is that was run on the rods that I have already, so everything should be pretty close to balanced. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Let's, let's head back to the house and uh, see you guys there. So now that we have the crank back at the house, let's take a quick look at a couple of the differences that I've learned between a cast crank and a forged crank which is very important when we're building a, a higher horsepower motor. I have the two cranks on the floor here. So a cast crank is gonna have the, a real sandpapery feel uh, from, cause they're cast in sand. So they're gonna have a real sandpapery feel right here where it's not machined. Uh, versus the, the forged crank is gonna be much smoother, almost a semi-gloss uh, finish here versus this is a very matte, rough finish on, on the cast crank. Uh, another major difference to look out for, uh, and this is just what I've learned through the process here, so I'm learning along the way with you guys. So let's stand them up here for a second. Okay, so another major difference are going to be the seams here. On a cast crank, you're going to have this really sharp, you're going to have a really sharp seam here where the, the halves of the casting uh, are separated. And on a forged crank, you have this really wide looking seam right here. Uh, so that's another way you can tell that it's a forged uh, crank. You can also see that here on this one. You can rotate this guy around, find some more of those seams. Another good example up here. Uh, just real sharp seam there. Um, and this forged crank has these nice rounded, rounded corners here. And the cast one has really sharp corners like this. Now, this one has already been balanced uh, to the rods that I have. That's why it has this work here. Uh, it looks like one of these balancing holes was filled. And those crower connecting rods that I have are rated, I think, about 1,200 horsepower. So that should be plenty. So yeah, from what I understand, cast cranks in the 5.4 are actually pretty rare. So lucky me, I guess, right? <laughs> Okay, that's definitely why it was really nice that I was able to pick up a forged one. Now, you know, a forged, this is out of a lightning, a forged lightning crank is going to be plenty strong for a turbocharged setup. You know, if you are su supercharged and looking to run the kind of horsepower that we're going to run, you may want to go uh, even beefier than a lightning forged crank. But as I've mentioned in past videos, a turbo is much, much nicer on the internals of an engine. The power to, from the boost does not hit immediately like it does with a supercharger. That's one of the reasons I've been able to push 10 pounds of boost through my stock motor is turbochargers are much friendlier to stock internals. So that's pretty exciting. We got that. We're one step closer to building that. We'll wait to hear back from the machine shop, make sure that block is good to go. Uh, he's going to He's gonna check out the rods as well, make sure they're all up to spec, and we'll make sure they match up with this crank perfectly. Had a little Viper action today. Got some more parts for the truck. As you notice, the truck's not in here right now. Uh, my brother's in town, and I let him borrow the truck while he's here for a, a vehicle to drive around, so I'm sure he's having a little bit of fun with that, so. <laughs> I'm kind of hesitant to say it yet, but we're probably going to be shooting for a thousand crank horsepower in gramps. So if you guys are excited to see that, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything coming up. Hit the like button if you haven't already, if you enjoy these videos. I appreciate all you guys sticking around, hanging out with me tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. I'll talk to you next time.